Hello and welcome. You're watching Africunia Television News Updates, bringing you updates from the African scene, the foreign scene and the world of sports. I'm Deborah Aze and many thanks for joining me. Our news update today will begin from West Africa, Nigeria, where a fresh move by the National Assembly to grant life pension for its presiding officers, including the Senate's President and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, as well as the deputies, has sparked outrage among civil society groups and some senior advocates. This is according to the National Assembly's Joint Special Ad Hoc Committee on the review of the 1999 Constitution, which laid its report containing 68 recommendations in the respective chambers on Wednesday. While the Senate has scheduled voting on the amendment bill for Tuesday, members of the House of Representatives are to consider and adopt the recommendation on Wednesday and Thursday. As still in Nigeria, there was paninomion yesterday at the Federal Ministry of Finance building in Abuja following an explosion from inverter batteries. Sources said the incident occurred at about 6.50 a.m. when security men noticed smoke emanating from the room housing the batteries of the ministry. Confirming the development, spokesperson for the Federal Fire Service, Paul Abraham, said the huge smoke emanating from the Federal Ministry of Finance located in the Central Business District, Abuja, was caused by a spark on inverter batteries. It said that when the service received the report of the fire outbreak, it deployed a team to the ministry to put the fire under control. And moving on, in Ethiopia, at least seven people were killed after an illegal mine collapsed in Ethiopia's Oromia regional state, as 11 orders also found themselves in a critical condition. The incident occurred as artisanal gold miners were caught up by the incident and buried on the ground while they were searching for gold. The victims were residents who had dug deep shafts in an area where Ethiopian mining ministry had been searching for minerals. And in Somalia, the programs of the International Monetary Fund in Somalia could stop in three months in case of new delay in the election, which began Tuesday a mission in the state of the Horn of Africa. Delayed by more than a year, the parliamentary election must, according to an agreement between the Somali leader, be completed on February 25th, allowing then the election of a president. But more than 100 seats have yet to be filled. For its part, the IMF is due to conclude an evaluation of its program in midway with several key points concerning future reforms be validated by the new government. Ms. Jaramillo notes that an interruption would affect the budgetary and received by Somalia from partners $285 million in 2020, but also the ongoing process of reducing its external debt. And now we head to the foreign scene where Russia forces fired missiles at several cities in Ukraine and landed troops on its coast on Thursday after President Putin authorized what he called a special military operation in the East. Shortly after Putin spoke in a televised address on Russian state TV, explosions could be heard in Pridan, quiet of the Ukrainian capital, in Kyiv. Gunfire rattled near the capital's main airport and sirens were heard over the city. U.S. President Joe Biden, reacting to an invasion the United States had been predicting for weeks, said his prayers were with the people of Ukraine as they suffer an unprovoked and unjustified attack, while promising tough sanctions in response. As still on the foreign scene, Ukraine closed its airspace to civilian flights on Thursday, citing a huge risk to safety, while Europe's aviation regulator also warned against the hazards to flying in bordering areas of Russia and Belarus because of the military activities. On its website, Ukraine State Air Traffic Service Enterprise said the country's airspace was closed to civilian flights starting from 0045 GMT on Thursday, with air traffic service suspended. The European Union Aviation Safety Agency said airspace in Russia and Belarus within 100 nautical miles of their borders with Ukraine could also pose safety risks. And now on to the sports scene, the title tussle between Liverpool and Manchester City appears to be heading to the wire and if there were any doubts whether judging club side could sustain the challenge, those were squashed with the utterly dominant display at Anfield. Liverpool truly dominated the pulsating 90 minutes and appeared to have far too much time and space in midfield to punish the visitors, approaching the game with a statement of intent for the race ahead and exposing Leeds customary open approach when playing top team ruthlessly. And finally, Manchester United were spared a damaging and deserving defeat by Atletico Madrid on Wednesday as Anthony Elenga's late goal rescued them a 1-1 draw in the first leg of the Champions League last 16. 
Atletico outplayed the sluggish United for the majority of the match at the Wanda Metropolitano and might have considered Felix's early goal scant reward heading into the second leg at Old Trafford in three weeks' time. But rather than extend the advantage, Atletico squandered it, Elanga raising onto a Bruno Fernandes through ball and applying a cool finish with 10 minutes left to earn United a draw that felt like a victory. And that's all we can take on news update today. Do ensure to follow all our social media platforms and join to Pangram, Instagram and Facebook respectively. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and leave a comment for us on the comment section. Once again, I'm Deborah Eze. Bye for now.